live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing 2017. 18,000 women and men here at the Orlando Convention Center. It gets bigger and bigger every year. And we're really excited to have our next guest, the soon to be looking for a new job and former CEO, but still employed by Needleborg, Telly Whitney, the founder of this fantastic organization and really the force beyond turning it from, as you said, an okay, an okay nonprofit mm -hmm. to really a force. So yes. Telly, as always, fantastic to see you. Oh, it's great to see you. Glad to, glad to welcome you back and yes. glad to have you here. Yes, thank you. So, interesting time. So you're going to be stepping down at the end of the year. You've passed the baton to Brenda. So as you, as you kind of look back, you know, get a moment to reflect, which I guess you can't do till January. They're still working you. You know, what an what a, um, unbelievable legacy. What an unbelievable baton that you are passing on uh, for Brenda's stewardship for the next chapter. <coughs> Yes, I mean, I've been CEO for the last 15 years, and under that time period, we've grown into a global force with impact well, well over 700,000 people. Um, we have well over 100,000 people who participated with the Grace Hopper or the Grace Hopper India. It's grown, in, I mean, what's been really exciting the last few days is hearing the stories. Right, right. Of how the impact that this but that the needabee.org has had on the lives of young women, but also mid-career and senior executives. And it's um, very, very inspiring to me. It is, it's fantastic. And I think the, the mid-career and more senior executive kind of uh, part of the story isn't as well known. And we've talked to um, Workday was here. I think they said they had 140 people. I think All I talked right. to Google. I think they had like 180. And I asked, I asked them, I said, is there any other show besides your own mm -hmm. that you bring that many people to from the company for their own professional development and, and growth? And there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, the reason why the Grace Hopper celebration has grown as significantly as it has is because more and more organizations and companies bring a large part of their workforce. Right. I mean, there are some companies that have brought up to 800 people, and sometimes even 1,000. Wow. And there's a reason why, because they see the impact that the conference has on retention and advancement of the women who work for them. And that's really a, a growing and increasing important part of the conversation. It is, is retention yes. and getting, and then two kind of getting the women who maybe left to have a baby or talking about military veterans getting back in. So there's there's a whole group of people kind of outside of the traditional. Took my four years of college, I got a CS degree, now I need a job. Mm -hmm. That are also leveraging the benefits of this conference to make that way back into tech. So important now as you know, autonomous vehicles are coming on board and all these other things that are going to displace a bunch of traditional jobs. The message here is, you can actually get into CS later in life and find a successful career. Yes, um, we have a real diversity of attendees. So, I mean, about a third of them are students and that's really, they're brought here by their universities because it makes a difference. We have a great group from the government. So there's this real effort to bring you know, state-of-the-art technology into our government. Initially spearheaded by Megan Smith, but right. really has grown. And the government brought quite a few women. And yes, we do have re-entry people. The companies are looking for women who are very interested in getting back at the workforce. It's, I mean, the great, what, the wonder about our profession is that they're in desperate need of talented computer scientists. And so because of that, more and more organizations are being innovative in how they reach out to different audiences. Yeah, and outside of you, I don't know that anyone is more enthusiastic about this conference than Megan Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's, <laughs> she is a force of nature. We saw yeah. last year, we were fortunate to get her on theCUBE this year, which was really <laughs> exciting. <laughs> and uh, you know, she just brings so much energy. We're seeing so much activity on the government side, regardless of your partisanship, of using cloud, using new technology, and that's mm -hmm. really driving, again, more innovation, more computing, and demand for more, more great people. Yes, we're very blessed that Megan has continued to come here every year. She came back this year, <clears throat> she sat on the main stage, and she has really 
been, I mean, her, her message to so many of the young women is that, you know, consider government, technology, as, a, as something you do, at least for a while. Right. And I think that that's a very important message if you think about how that impacts our lives. Right, for, for the good, and, yes. and that was a big part of her message that <clears throat> I think she went through kind of a, a, a classic kind of uh, legal resume and some other kind of classic resumes where you have that chapter in your career yes. where you do go into <coughs> government and you do mm -hmm. make a contribution to something a little bit mm -hmm. bigger than potentially your, your regular job. But, it does strike me though how technology and software engineering specifically is such an unbelievable vehicle in which to change the world. You know, the traditional barriers of distribution, access to capital, the amount of funding that you used to have to have to build a company, all those things are gone now through cloud and the internet and now you can write software and change the world pretty easily. Yes, I mean, <clears throat> technology has the possibility of of being, I mean, equal access for anybody. Open source, anybody can start to code to open source. There are many ways for anybody, but particularly women, to get back in. I am, um, but I also like to think about many of the companies who are here, who bring their diversity, they bring their senior executives, they bring this large number of women, and they create this, this view across the entire company of how to create a company that's impactful as well as you know, developing the products that they are invested in. Right. I mean, you can have impact in many different ways through companies, through nonprofits, through government, through, through many different ways. Right, and not only the diversity of the people, but one of the other things we love about this show is the diversity of the companies that are here. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's government as I look out, there's <gasps> industrial equipment companies, there's entertainment companies, MLB is right across from us <laughs> uh, and has been there all it, the three days. So it's really, it's really a fantastic really display of this kind of horizontal impact of technology, and then of course, as we know, it does make better business to have diversity in teams. It, it's, it's not about doing just the right thing, it's actually about having better bottom line impact and better bottom line results, and that's been proven time and time again. Well, yes, and <clears throat> so what I know is that every company is a technology company. I mean, <clears throat> if you think about the entire banking industry, they have this huge technology workforce. If you look, so certainly classic technology companies have a lot of engineers, but insurance and banking and almost anything. I mean, we have a lot, increasing the amount of retail, Target, Best Buy, places right. like that. Right. Okay, so yeah. I tried to order it a horse mm -hmm. so you could ride off into the sunset at the end of this interview, <laughs> but they wouldn't let me get a food security. Okay. But before I let you go, I'd just love to get your thoughts on, on, um, on Brenda and kind of the passing of the baton. How mm -hmm. did you find her? What are some of the things that you feel comfortable, feel good about, beyond mm -hmm. comfortable, to really you know, give her the mantle, the baton, if you will, for the next chapter of Anita Board? <clears throat> So, I mean, I've been very blessed to lead this organization for 15 years, and this is my baby, but there is nothing more heartwarming than to be able to talk to a visionary leader like Brenda. Brenda is extraordinary. She really believes in um, computer science for all. She believes that all women should be at the table creating technologies. She has a vision of where she wants to take it. And yes, she just started last Sunday, so we have to give her a little time. <laughs> you were right into <laughs> the deep end, right? Swim. <laughs> but she is just, I mean, I just feel very blessed to have Brenda in my life. And I will be there in any way that she needs for me to be there to work with her. But she is going to be a great leader. Oh, absolutely. Well, Telly, as always, great, uh, and as you said, you're more busy than maybe you expected to be here, yes. so to, to find a few minutes to stop by theCUBE, again, thank you for inviting us mm -hmm. to be here. It is really one of our favorite places to be every year. Finally, my youngest daughter turns next 18 mm -hmm. next year, so I can bring her too, and, uh, and, and congratulations for everything you've accomplished. I love to be here, thank you for coming. Glad we could talk. All right, she's Telly okay. Whitney, I'm Jeff Frick. If you're looking for a very highly qualified woman in tech, she might be on the market in 2018. <laughs> Give me a call, I'll set you up. All right, you're watching theCUBE from the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. Thanks for watching. <laughs>